Um, the first emperor, it's Qin, Qin Shi Huang. Oh, okay. Qin, Qin Shi Huang Qin. Di, maybe. I will talk about the names in a minute because yeah. I too will absolutely butcher probably every single one of these. That's all right. But there's no way around it because. I'll do it worse. Just like where I even struggle, most people, Englishmen struggle with even French and German mm. or even Scottish or Welsh words. Of course, going to absolutely get this all kinds of wrong. So yes. you're just going to have to live with that. But I don't think we've got a fantastic amount of native Chinese uh, watchers of the Lotus Eaters. So possibly not. Um, but there you go. Yeah, Quinn is, is Chin, Chin uh, for a start. Right. But um, another thing, just very quickly to say on that is to pronounce it properly, not only do you need to know sort of what it's supposed to sound like, but you've really kind of got to put on a Chinese accent to do it real justice. And that's more embarrassing than yeah. to me than just saying it like the she. It would be more like shu or something. And I'm not going to do that. I'm not <laughs> no, going to, you know. Why not? That's the little French. You've got to put on a French yeah. accent to pronounce it, don't you? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you do. The, it's, it's not the Bayou tapestry. It's beer. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to do that. Well, I feel comfortable yeah. with things a bit like with French and things. I guess, but yeah. with Chinese, I'm just, yeah, I'm I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. And um, um, John, who works for us here, our producer, yeah. is from Hong Kong. And I've yeah. asked him a few questions about But he speaks Cantonese, not Mandarin. Right. Right, okay. and all this is sort of Mandarin stuff. Right, right. Okay. One of the questions I asked him is, "What is the what is the word for China in Cantonese mm. and in Mandarin? Neither of them sound like our English word China. Right, it's okay. just completely different sounding words. So it's just so it's a Maya. It's a Maya. Um, but yeah, Chin, because he was he's he's the king of Chin first, yeah. first and foremost. And Ch Chin is the people, right? Yeah, like it refers to an ethnic group. Yeah, right, yeah. So there were like basically seven kingdoms. Yeah. yeah. And one of one of which was the Qin. Right. Um, so okay. he was like the, the king of the Qin, first and foremost. Right. And then his other names there, like Shi Huang or Shi Huang Di, mm -hmm. that is a title, meaning for, literally meaning first emperor. Oh, right. Or the okay. first emperor. Right. But that's uh, it's common, isn't it? Like Augustus's real name wasn't Augustus. Yeah. You know, yeah. His real name was Octavian. Or, well, it just happens loads, doesn't it? Like yeah. all the popes, our modern day Pope Francis, his real name's like George. Yeah. George. Or whatever. So anyway, it's cause, so his real name was uh, Zheng, Li, Ling Zhen, or Ying Zhen. Right, okay. But I think I'll probably just to make it easier, because loads of these names are also, on top of everything else, quite similar sounding, at least yeah. to the Western ear, I'll just probably call him the Emperor a lot of the time. Or the this is the thing, I could never get the hang of the names. Right, yeah. yeah. And yeah. loads of them are really similar, and the place names as well, again, yeah. to the Western ear. A lot of them sound the same. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's just something you've got to get to grips with if you... Uh... So I am interested in Chinese history. And mm. I think when you are sort of new to a whole sort of theatre of history, there's, there's better or worse places to start. So, for example, just for example, if you were new to ro ancient Roman history, the life and times of Julius Caesar is... A, or Augustus, perhaps, is a great yeah. place to start. If you're interested in medieval England, the Tudors, perhaps. Mm. So for Chinese history, although it's not the beginning, nowhere near... Mm. Um, the life of the first emperor is a great, it's a great place yeah. to start. And I've gone over it a number of times in my life. And the, this is the first emperor of a unified China as well, That's right? Because, yeah. of course, before then, it was a fractured uh, area of various small kingdoms. Mm. Right. A couple of quick things to mention then. Where we're talking about China or united China, it's still way smaller than the modern China right. on the map, like way smaller. Um, so that's one thing to mention. Another one is to say, to put it in its historical context, um, the first emperor's dates are about 260, 259 BC, mm -hmm. and he dies in about, well, in 210 BC. So it's relatively contemporaneous with Alexander the Diadochi and the rise of the Romans. Yeah, a little after. I mean, it's, it's the really the, the Second Punic yeah. War. While this is going on, it's yeah. the Second Punic War. Right, okay. Because Hannibal is what, like 216, 217? Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, yeah. well, they're the big battles in Italy yeah. for Hannibal anyway. So, yeah, while that's, whilst that's yeah. going on, it's, it's on the other side of the world. Crazy period in yeah. Mediterranean history. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, of course, they didn't really have any contact with each other. No, no. Um, so, yeah. It's Although we, we should do one talking about uh, Roman and Chinese contact because a few hundred years later, they did start having contact right. with each other. Yeah, that's uh, right. And that's actually really interesting. Yeah, but we'll, we'll do that another one another time. Famous story when some Romans went on basically what became the Silk Route. Yeah. And um, some eventually came back, maybe. We, but anyway, that's a very interesting story, isn't it? <laughs> Wait, yeah, we'll, we'll do an episode story. dedicated to it because it's really good. So another thing I'd like to say, just super quick before we sort of jump into the details of mm. his life and times, um, is to put it in a tiny bit more context. If we're talking the 200s BC, there's still like a couple of thousand years of documented Chinese mm. uh, dynastic history before that. 
And there's just so many, if you look at a list, you can find a list on Wikipedia or something of all the Chinese dynasties. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like the, the, the Shai, the Shang, the Zhou, the Qin, the Han, the Tang, the Song, the Ming. It goes on and on and on. Yeah. Um, and this is the Qin, the Qin dynasty. And it's actually really short. It doesn't last much after his death. Right. One of his sons, younger sons, has a, a quick go before he himself is deposed. And then there's a quizzling dude and then it's over. So, so it's the Qin dynasty is actually quite short. Kind of like the Sargon of Akkad, Akkadian dynasty. Right, so it's only a couple of generations before it's all gone. Yeah. Well, I, f I find, in, in this sense anyway, there's a very obvious parallel with Alexander. Once the big man's yeah, dead, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's almost straight away. It's mm. not with Alexander, it really is straight away. It's like oh, the yeah. day he dies, it yeah. all falls apart pretty yeah. much. It's not quite that, but it's very nearly that. Right. Um, uh, however, another parallel I, I, I think of sometimes whenever I go over his life um, is that though it was short, really short, not much, m not much more than his own lifetime, it was just really, really pivotal. Sometimes you get that, like mm. Caesar mm. and Augustus. Um, what they did just set the tone for centuries and centuries, and yeah. in a sense, forevermore. As in the Tsar of Russia being called the Tsar right. after a Caesar. Yeah. You know, exactly. People are trying to recapture that primal, like primordial glory from the very first time that it was done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, or even all through the Byzantine period or the later Roman yeah. period, you've got Augustuses and yeah, Caesars yeah. and all that sort they, of thing. They all lay claim to the the word becomes a kind of totem, doesn't it? Yeah. And it kind of it, it holds a majesty in men's minds, which is why they'll scramble for it. No, I'm the Tsar. It's like, you're a Russian autocrat. What <laughs> the hell are you talking about? Hmm. Oh, there's the third Rome. It's like, what, well, Rome? What are you talking about? The Romans never came anywhere near here. Hmm. You know, <laughs> what, are you, what are you blathering about, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I'm the Rome. Okay, fine. You know, it leads to like the 21st century where there's a Latin radio station in Finland. It's like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Romans had nothing to do with any of this, but they want, you know, anyway. Well, like Caesar is a household word, really, almost. Yeah. Like if you know anything about ancient history, ancient Rome, you oh, yeah. would know Caesar. He's probably the right. most famous Roman. Right. Yeah. And, and, yeah. So there's something equivalent. That there's something equivalent here that yeah. even though his dynasty wasn't very long last lasting, what he did just echoes through the ages, echoes through eternity. Mm. Um, um, because, uh, sorry? Not wrong. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, because, well, we'll get into exactly why that's the story of his life, really, mm. why it's so. I feel like, again, where I mentioned the Tudors, mm -hmm. Tudor dynasty is not really that long. No. You've got Henry the Seventh, Henry Tudor, Henry the Eighth, and his, his son very briefly and two of his daughters, but that's it. After Elizabeth is gone, that's really quite. A, let's, it's not let's, a fantastically long. Let's get dynasty, into it. You're it? really selling me. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm All right. Like, come on, come on. <laughs> what happened then? <laughs> All right. So, um, so let's start with his parentage a bit yeah. because um, his his mother plays a big part in it. Right. In lots of Chinese like history, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In lots of Chinese history, uh, the the empresses and dowager empresses and things yeah. quite often play, in, and the important concubines and things often play a big role. This is no different. Right, right. Um, so um, his father, who was known as Prince Yiren, mm -hmm. um, later became King Zhongzhang, um, he was just one of many boys from his grandfather, from the first emperor's grandfather, one of like over 20, I think. Mm. Um, and he struck up a really important relationship with apparently quite a rich, quite a very successful, um, what would you call it, sort of merchant, someone of the merchant class, mm. someone called Lu Bui, who is extremely important. He, he's is extremely important, becomes mm. like a regent sort of figure in the end. Anyway, this Lu Bui um, helps him ascend to the throne because the grandfather actually only reigns for something silly like three days before he's himself assassinated there's so many assassinations oh, in, in at this time in china byzantine um, politics yeah really really yeah. Oh, well that goes on all through the three kingdoms period which is arguably probably one of china's most famous ancient yeah. periods which is a couple of hundred years after this so still in in antiquity like in the 180s 200s ad hmm. it's sort of the three kingdoms period uh, but even even in this period there's just everyone's backstabbing everyone and undercutting and all sorts yeah. of things constantly yeah. Um, it's interesting that that roughly analogous to like Roman civil wars as well, you know, mm. like Constantine and various people like that. You know, it's like strange how these parallels keep coming around. One of the ones I have in my mind is um, is Charlemagne. Mm. It reminds me of Charlemagne because Charlemagne had a, again sort of a massive empire he built for himself, mm. and it falls apart pretty much on his death. Yeah. And um, yeah, Charlemagne for me is a parallel, although mm. you know, it's like a thousand years later or yeah. not, and on the other side of the world. But there you go, power's power. It sort of plays out in similar ways 
all the time. Yeah, it is the kind of natural forces of governorship, governorship that we're looking at, isn't it? That's you know how these things play out. There's a predictable pattern that you can look for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this Lu Bai seems to be mm. sort of an eminence grease or a power behind the throne or something. He's sort of, um, um, I hesitate to say kingmaker, but some schemer. Yeah, a great schemer. Yeah. Um, and and he sort gets of Varys. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he gets the prince uh, Yiren to the throne of yeah. of, of Chin. Mm -hmm. So I'll put a map up so everyone can see. Yeah. And there's sort of seven of these kingdoms, for mm. want of a better word, and the most powerful ones are the Chu, the Chin, and the Zhao. Um, they're sort of the, th the three biggest and the three most powerful. Um, and we've had, they've had a long period of battling amongst themselves where for like a couple of hundred years before this, mm. where no one kingdom has been able to really get the full upper hand. Um, and, um, and the first emperor's mother, Lady Zhao, is, is from, from Zhao. <laughs> and at one point when he's a very, very little boy, almost a baby really, the first emperor is in inverted commas, a hostage there. But, you yeah, know, but ancient hostages, yeah. not the same thing. Kept quiet well, but apparently not in the lap of luxury or anything, because oh, really? he does harbour resentments, which play out later. Mm. Uh, but still not, you know, not kept in a cell yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. Um, okay, but the, this uh, Lady Zhao, or sort of, you could call her sort of a, a dowager queen Zhao later, mm -hmm. um, because... At first, she was a concubine just of the Lu Bui chap. Apparently, she was oh, really? ridiculously attractive, yeah. like a Helen of Troy type. You know, everyone agreed she was one of the most beautiful women, women you could ever see with your eyes. <laughs> and was, so, uh, what was Justinian's wife, Theodora, was it? Um, Justinian, yes, yes, Theodora, yeah. Yeah, 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 she was supposed to be. Yeah. Well, just, no. Got to be careful of these remarkably attractive women <laughs> who end up in powerful places, just saying. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a great or terrible combination <laughs> yeah. to be where everyone where you're undeniably yeah. beautiful, and if you're uh, ruthless as well, ambitious and ruthless and beautiful, can quite often be a recipe for mm. great success and or disaster. Anyway, the, uh, the the Queen Dowager Zhao seems to have been that because she was Lu Bai's sort of concubine in the first instance, but then when the the king, the father of the first emperor, sort of sees her, mm. he immediately wants to marry her and just does. Yeah. And she's pregnant sort of immediately or already. So this is one of the things. Is the first emperor, you know, is Qin Shi Huangdi the legitimate son of a king and a queen or was he the illegitimate son of the, of the Lu Bui character? Right. And the sources suggest it. Some say he just definitely was and some say that's just a dirty rumour. Yeah, but right. obviously we don't know. So I'd like to pause uh, ever so quickly here and mention yeah. the sources, because yeah. it is important, especially for real history nerds, at least a couple, yeah. one minute at least, just to say. The main sources really on this, because it's so far back, 200 yeah. BC is a long, long time ago, there's only a couple of great sources. One is, well, the, the, the main one is called uh, The Records of the Grand Historian. The Grand Historian is uh, <laughs> Shima Chiang. What a great Chiang. title. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Records of the Grand Historian. Well, you know, it does what it says in the tin, I suppose. Yeah. You know what you're getting. Yeah. Um, uh, and the other one is uh, is the annals of Lu Bui mm -hmm. himself, um, the spring and autumn annals, which is a a, a reference to Confucius. <clears throat> right. As Confucius wrote about the spring and the autumn. Um, and, uh, and now most of the the main one, the records of the Grand Historian, date from the next dynasty, the Han Dynasty, mm. and they were enemies ideologically. And just well, dynastically, they, they overthrew off the chin. The chin, didn't they? Right. So, of course, they're going to be. Uh, I don't want to say slanderous or anything. So, not necessarily the case. I mean, feel free. No, but, I mean, they, they <laughs> some may, say they were. They exactly. may well have been, but you like. It's easy to say, well, because they overthrew them, they must have despised them and done everything they could to. Uh, talk them down it's like maybe but like you know if it's written like a hundred years after the event maybe you don't need to do that you know maybe actually mm. there's no particular threat of that dynasty coming back because they're all exterminated or something mm. and so do you need to you know who knows i don't i don't mm. know you know mm. it's it's just it's not a necessary connection you know, it could be it might not be it's a fair point and modern scholars historians do argue about exactly that mm. um they think that well um the first emperor was categorically not a not a devotee of Confucius hmm. and the Han really were right 
So they think when we get to it, um, the, the theme of Confucius and Confucianism, mm. they think that almost certainly um, the later Han are casting shadow over right. the chin, yeah. but on a lot of it, probably not. And then, of course, we've got the archaeology. Mm. And the archaeology does seem to back up loads of what's said in the records of the Grand Historian. Okay, well, like um, the the um, the terracotta army. Hmm. That is the first emperor's oh, really? burial place. Oh, right, that is okay. him. That's right. very cool. We'll get to that at the very end. See, this is just my 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 particular weird canard of being like, actually, I don't think everyone who wrote everything things down in history was a gigantic liar. Uh, I, I weirdly I feel the need to extend a kind of compassion to them and be like, well, look, maybe they were trying to do their best, actually. You know, maybe they weren't just evil Machiavellian schemers who were like, no, I'm going to make history think this person was terrible for all time. You know, maybe they were just trying to do their best. Well, you don't know. Yeah. Well, just to back you up on that particular point, the Terracotta Army wasn't really discovered or unearthed mm. until sort of the 1970s. Mm. And until then, most scholars apparently had said... Um, the, oh, that's the, a lie. Yeah, they that's didn't. A lie. They didn't bury a whole army of clay and bronze, f yeah. fake men. And then, and then it's the archaeology is yeah. it's there. It really is there. Yeah, it's just mean spirited. So, to be like no, because we haven't found it. You're a liar. Mm, mm. Yeah. But we'll see. It's up to anyone that wants to read all this stuff to make up their own mind. Well, yeah. you know, yeah. really, it's up to you. Verify any of it. Really. I'm not going to try and tell you a categorical yes mm. or no on these things. Um, just anyway. present you with. Um, with the, the detail. So the apparently legitimate son of the king, mm. not the illegitimate son of Lu Bai. Mm. Uh, what does he do? <laughs> so the father dies. Um, I think Which natural father? causes. Oh, sorry, <laughs> the, king, right? the king. Yeah, um, <laughs> King Zhang. Prince Zhang. Harry situation. This is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, everyone's like, oh yeah, he's definitely your son, but he does look a lot like Lu Bai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, this sort of uh, Captain James Hewitt situation <laughs> yeah, going <exactly>. on. <clears throat> Um, he only has about three years on the throne himself, and then he he dies. Yeah. And so the first emperor, um, King Zhen, really, mm -hmm. um, ascends to the throne, and he's only like thirteen years old. Mm. Uh, which, although you grew up quicker in the ancient world, um, you had to. Still, thirteen's quite young. Yeah. So L Lu Bai uh, becomes sort of a, a chancellor, a prime minister, a regent, regent some sort, yeah. something like that. And his mother is also sort of super powerful. Mm. Um, the Dowager Queen, um, until he can sort of really start taking the reins fully for himself. Yeah. Um, okay, so in about the year 235 BC, um, so he's like, uh, well, it's by the time by the time he's about twenty odd, um, there's some sort of formal process where he's entirely got the, the the cockpit of power, if you like, is entirely yeah. in, in his hands. And we see pretty much straight away that he's... Uh, before you know, I assume this is some sort of ritual anointing and yeah. ceremony and... Yeah. You know, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. The whole nine yards. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in that meantime, um, the Dowager Queen has become sort of a political... Um, a, a problem for Lu Bai politically. A liability? Yeah, a liability. Um, so wow. he fobs her off on, on a, 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 apparently a eunuch. What he, did she do? Well, she's just a, sort of uh, an endless schemer. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Again, that might be a trope. Um, you know, quite often it happens. That is a trope in history, isn't it? That the... But quite often it's a trope for a reason. Right. And he doesn't really want, Lu Bai doesn't really want the, the rumours that he's yeah. he sort of uh, cuckolded the, the old king in any yeah, sort of way. Yeah. Um, so he sort of fobs her off with a, a, a character called uh, Lao Ai. It becomes important in the first little stage of the first emperor's life, and he was um, a un apparently a eunuch. Turns apparently? out he wasn't a eunuch oh. because he sires two children with her, oh. who would be the first emperor's half brothers. Right? Weird to pretend to be a eunuch, isn't mm. it? Mm. I suppose it gets you access to women you otherwise wouldn't have had access to. Mm. And also, it said, without being too crude, that not only wasn't he a eunuch, he was fantastically endowed, should we say. <laughs> like, ridiculously. Like, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> so, so, Maybe there you he's, go. he's ironically called the eunuch. All right. <laughs> but the fact he was allowed anywhere near the ja Dowager Queen, he yeah. had to pretend that he was a eunuch. Mm. That's how it goes. Um, <laughs> and so, by the time the yeah. first emperor sort of becomes king of the chin in his, in his own right, mm. um, 
he realises, and he's, he is ruthless. He's yeah. absolutely ruthless. There's no two ways about that. Um, he decides he just needs to kind of get rid of everyone that sort of could even kind of possibly undermine him in any way. Right. And it seems that uh, Lao Ai, his mother's lover, hmm. joke eunuch, um, is going to be in the way. Eunuch. Yeah, I know, yeah. It's really good, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Um, yeah, go on. That he's going to be in the way. And he finds out, wait, what? They've got, they've got two illegitimate sons together, little kids. Hmm. Um, like, oh, you know, five years old, eight years old or whatever. Mm. And, and so Lao Ai realises that he's probably going to get executed. So he sort of pulls the triggers first and tries to start a rebellion. Oh, right, okay. Because he figures, you know, when you're painted again in, uh, into a corner, well, I mean, it's sort of his only... This trick. young king is going to kill you and your children. Almost certainly. Yeah. So apparently the, the story was he forges some documents saying that he can command a, a, a small part of the army, right. raises this small part of the army and tries to march on the imperial palace in Qin. Uh, but the first emperor himself hears of this and um, it doesn't really come to anything. Right. And uh, Lao Ai is executed disgustingly. The thing of uh, tying ropes around both your arms and legs and around your neck and then tied to horses, yeah. and they run in different directions. So, yeah, gross. That can't have been pleasant. And he has every single member of Lao Ai's family killed, <laughs> and, the, and the two boys, the two little yeah. boys strangled. I, kn- I knew it was going to be horrible. Apparently one of the stories just had a slightly more horrible twist to it. Apparently before anyone realised exactly what he was going to do, he got the two boys, he had an audience with these two boys, and said, if you were king, just imagine, if you were king, do you think you'd make a good king? And the little kid, the older of the two little kids, said, like, yeah, I think I'd make a good king. Apparently that just seals their fate in his mind. So, yeah, he has them killed, strangled with silk or something like that, something right. classically Chinese. Yeah. As for his own mother, Lady Zhao, um, he exiles her. He just exiles her. Okay, could have been worse. Apparently he was perfectly within his rights to have her killed if he wanted to, but he did actually draw the line there. Well, I mean, he's the king. I mean, there doesn't seem to be any limit on his power. No. No, there really isn't. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. It's funny, actually, just, just to say there, for example, somebody like Caesar or Augustus, mm. there's all sorts of moral limits on their power, mm. isn't there? Mm. Like, you don't wear red boots. That's beyond the pale. I didn't a, even know about that. As a, like, yeah, so yeah. the kings of Rome, the old kings of Rome, yeah. like Tarquinius, would wear red boots. Oh, right. One time okay, Caesar right, was right. seen wearing red boots, and everyone was like, oh, my God, you can't. Oh, it's my God, king. he thinks he's, he's going to be king. king. Oh, yeah. Mark Antony's offering him a crown. Oh, God, yeah. what's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's none of that. In, right, yeah. in second century BC, Chin. No, no, you are just an absolute monarch in yeah. the truest sense. I'm That's literally the, the divine representative here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the pharaoh. You've got a mandate from heaven. Yeah. They say that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. is literally like the, the, the... I've been studying Vola, actually, and he talks about how uh, ancient societies had these sort of views of the, the king being a kind of personification of a deity on earth. Mm. And that's, you know, that's what the, all the rituals and all the anointing is for. And when you sit on the throne, you're anointed. You're, you know, you're personifying these spiritual forces. And so, I mean, if you're a peasant that believes this, well, what are you going to say? So, yeah. what am I, I'm, I'm not going to be heretical and tell the gods they're wrong. You know, I'm just going to make you kill this mother. Okay, fair enough. You know, I'm going to go back to farming my rice, you yeah, know? yeah, peacefully and quietly, like a good uh, subject. Yeah, it's not only treason; it's heresy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. It's not only treason, it's heresy. Yeah, that's and, above my pay grade, I'm yeah, afraid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The king is enforcing divine laws, you know. It's not my business, you know. Mm, yeah. I, I'm just farming my pigs, you know. <laughs> and so this uh, um, Lu Bui, who's yeah. been sort of the power behind the throne in all sorts of ways for a generation or so, mm. he's implicated in all this as well. No kidding. On some level. Um, but because he is, if not, if not the first emperor's father, at least he's a type of surrogate father anyway, mm. And so he has, um, the first emperor does have uh, some pity on him and only exiles him. And apparently that really was being clement. Hmm. Um, but what he does is uh, within a couple of years, he, uh, he paints him into a corner where he commits suicide. Right. And his own mother also, in fact, I've heard a couple of different things about the fate of his own mother, that lady Zhao. Some say she lived for years and years and years before she died. Hmm. And others say, I think that she uh, was dead within a couple of years as well just because she sort of just politically needed to be mm. out of the way. Her story needed to end. But anyway, they don't really make a massive reappearance on the scene of his, on the stage of history after that point. But where that um, Lu Bui is now out of the picture, um, the, the first emperor needs sort of another 
chancellor type, prime minister type, second in command person. Need someone to do the min, uh, ministerial work. Right. Yeah. Um, and so it, it was Liu Bai's second in command, his protege that takes up the reins. And here's a character called Li Su. Just a, before we go on, I just can't help but think of the just terrifying existence these people seem to have. Like, mm. constant paranoia and backstabbing and threat of being just brutally executed. And your whole family being brutally executed. It's just constantly every single day on the table. So you have got to make sure that you put every foot completely securely in the right place or else, boom, oh, no, you've, you've tripped wired something and now the emperor is mad and now he's having you killed and everyone you know killed and, you know, and, and the emperor's got something going, right, if I, I could kill him, but if I kill him, I mean, maybe this guy will kill me in my sleep. So everyone is living with this fundamental substratum of total insecurity about their own existence. Yeah. Like, what a horrible, like, Byzantine court politics, you know, it's like, and everyone's thinking, well, look, all I have to do is kill the emperor and then I've got all the power, you know, and you say, oh, God, what a terrifying world this is. Yeah, sword of Damocles oh. over nearly everyone's head at all times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. A, a horrible very way sharp to live. sword of Damocles as well. I don't know how I, I wouldn't be able to really live under that sort of pressure. I would, yeah, I, I just don't to. think I would. I wouldn't want it. I'd be like, yeah. I'll just go and Diocletian style farm my cabbages. <laughs> you know, thanks. You know, you guys can enjoy the court politics. Mm. Not, mm. not my business. You know, it's funny you should take a moment out to say that because this uh, Lee Su, or Lee Su, really does he it? scheme and plot? Does yes. He? What a he, shock! He becomes well. He outlives the first emperor. Right. Right. And the the next little bit of the Qin Dynasty. Um, is bound up with him. Right. And he's sort of an arch. If anyone's holding the sword of Damocles over nearly anyone's head, it's him. Right, okay. What a, what a surprise. Uh, How did yeah. I know? <laughs> he's uh, arguably, the, yeah. well, he's sort of the most important figure right. other than the emperor himself, this 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 Li Su. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, he becomes, um, well, yeah, in all but name, the most powerful, in other than the emperor himself, the most powerful man in the mm. kingdom. To watch the full video, please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com.